In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the metal ray's symbol exposure, and we'll see how this can be used to add a tremendous amount of control to our final rendered image. So a good example of where we could use something like this is if we're using something like a physical light in our scene. Now, if you've already had a chance to go through our lesson on using the metal ray physical light, you've seen some of the benefits of using this particular light source as far as being able to mimic the way that real light behaves. However, one of the problems that we did discuss in that lesson is the fact that you do often wind up with these very bright hot spots that are very close to the point of light emission. So a good way that we can fix this is with the simple lens exposure. So let's take a look at the uh, process of setting this up. So we'll go to View, Select Camera, take a look inside the attributes, go down to the Metal Ray area, and we're going to plug this in as a lens shader to our current camera. So let's go over here and we'll use the MIA simple exposure. Alright, now there are just a handful of options that we have available to us. Now let's take our current render that we have here, save it for comparison, and let's re-render with the lens exposure applied to our camera. And you can see that right away that overall this is uh, comes out very very bright and washed out. So let's take a look at some of these different attributes that are going to be responsible for this process. Now one of the things that is important to keep in mind is that each one of these parameters don't necessarily work independently of each other. Instead you can really think of this as more of a top-down calculation. So at render time it will first calculate the pedestal, then based on the color result it will calculate the gain, then based on that calculate the knee, and so on and so forth. So let's start with the pedestal. Now this is really the control over the darkest values of our image. So right now with this set to zero, you can start to see that even the darkest parts of our area, or our rendered image, still come out fairly bright. Now if we wanted to darken these up, we could start to decrease this pedestal to a little lower value, or a negative value, and that'll start to introduce a little bit more darkness into these darkest areas. All right, and you can start to see that result here. Now, a little bit goes a long ways whenever using this, so sometimes just very, very small negative values will work just fine for you. And you can, again, start to see how that is now starting to introduce a little bit more darkness in here. Now, below this, we have the gain. Now, this is very, very important because this is controlling the overall amount of brightness that we have in our image. So right now, with this physical light, you can see that we do have very, very bright values. Values that most likely go way beyond the typical value of 0 to 1 that we would normally get. 0 being absolute black, 1 being absolute white. More than likely we have some kind of an ultra white color here. Now right now with this gain set to 1, uh, we're pretty much allowing a lot more of the spectrum in this rendered image than we would typically be able to see. So if now we want to be able to cap these white values at a certain level, we can begin decreasing this. So let's start with the value of 0.1. Now let's take our image that we have here, again save it for comparison, and re-render. And you can see how that makes a significant impact on our rendered image. So really you can think of this gain as being a representative value of the 0 to 1 that we would normally see in our image. So by setting this to 0.1, we're now only allowing uh, light within a 0 to 1 uh, range to be rendered. So you can see how really this makes a very big impact. So anything beyond the value of 1 as far as the rendered image goes now gets pretty much clipped out. You can see how that really really starts to soften this up. Now once this gets clipped out we then come to the gain or rather the knee. Now the knee will start to take any values that fall above this level and start to brighten those up. So normally we would try to keep this, but somewhere between 0 to 1. So if we really want to start to see this effect a little bit more, uh, let's try to increase this to something like 0.8. There we go. Now because we are killing off a lot of these uh, values up in the gain, because we did crank this down so low, we may not be able to see much of an effect on the knee itself. But if we were to save this and re-render, by now increasing that knee value, we're now allowing a little bit more of that ultra bright color to come through. So if you compare on the side of this dice right here, what we had now to what we had before, you can see that what we had before is just a little bit darker because we were clipping 
a lot more of those color values with the knee. Now this becomes a little bit more apparent if I were to begin increasing this gain to allow just a little bit more of that color to come through. So again, you can now start to see that some of these levels are a little bit brighter. And this really becomes apparent now with this very washed out area that we have on this side of the dice. So again, really this, this gain value is controlling the overall brightness. Now where those values start to get clipped is with this knee value. So now if we really start to lower this to something fairly low, and again save this for comparison, re-render, you can see how that knee will now suppress just these very brightest areas. And you'll notice that um, again this becomes very very clear to see on the side of this dice with a high knee level versus a very low knee level. And what's nice about this is the fact that by adjusting this knee we're really not uh, making any kind of alterations to any of these darker parts of the image. This is strictly controlling the highest or brightest points in the image and we'll remap the rest of the image accordingly. Now below that we have the compression which is the point at which uh, once all of these calculations take place one after the other the uh, compression amount will then start to focus on how quickly we start to clip out some of these higher values. So this should become a little bit more apparent with a very very high compression value we save this and re-render. You can now see how this uh, compression is really suppressing just as a whole these brightest parts of our image and as this compression value starts to increase we're really clipping out more and more of these brightest parts of our image and really squashing those colors down. So typically the compression value of 2 will work just fine. Below that we have the gamma which is the final little bit of color correction that will happen in our rendered image normally this value of 2.2 will work just fine although there's also values you can use such as uh, 1.8 which is another traditional gamma value but really anything below this value you'll start to now get very close to what we had in our original image as far as the overall brightness is concerned now again be aware that uh, this all happens in a sequential order so by just setting the gamma back to 1 we really won't necessarily get exactly what we had in our original image. As you can see here, you, it's obviously much, much darker than what we had before. So for most situations, the default gamma value of 2.2 should work just fine. And there we go. So really you can start to see how this lens exposure control can be used to give us a very high level of control over our final rendered image. If you compare what we had before with no exposure control applied, versus what we have now. You can see how this can be used to really, really even out the lighting in our scene and start to increase the values or decrease the values even of certain points of our brightness and start to increase or decrease the darkest points of our image and everything in between. So that's a look at how we can utilize this very simple mental ray lens exposure.